Salaam everybody, welcome to Physics with Noshir and we're discussing this paper. Let's have a look at the first question. Before I start, you need to know what is time base. Time base is the value of one box horizontally and that is given to you as 0 0.01 seconds per division. When they say per division, they will tell you exactly what they mean by one division. That means one box horizontally. So it's the value of one box horizontally and the time period is the time taken for one complete wave. They've given you the frequency as 25 hertz, so you can do one more frequency to get the time for one wave. So one wave is taking 0 0.04 seconds. So you tell me if the value of one box is 0 0.01, what is the value of two boxes? 0 0.02, three boxes, 0 0.03, four boxes, 0 0.04. So your wave will be finishing in four boxes horizontally. The second thing that you need to know is voltage gain. Voltage gain is the value of one box vertically. Amplitude is the peak voltage. So the peak voltage is 4 volts, as they're mentioning in the question. Your Y gain or your voltage gain is 2 volts per division. And they've told you what they mean by division. One box vertically. So how many boxes should you have vertically? Two boxes, because you need 4 volts and one box is 2 volts. So let's make some points. So this is where my wave is starting from. I should go to two boxes above the mean line. Then I should come back. Then I should go below. And then I should come back. Now, if I join my waveform, this is what I should get. And I can repeat. So you should finish exactly at this point. My, my waveform has gone slightly ahead. So I should correct that. However, you should be exactly, exactly, exactly at this point here. And that goes there. So you can continue all the way till the end, or you can just show us one waveform. That's also good enough. And now this is an amplitude of four volts because one box is two volts. And this is the answer. Question number two, part A says, describe an experiment to show the difference between an insulator and a conductor. So what you can do is you can take a cell and you could connect a bulb and you could connect this box. This box is not a resistor. This is just a box. Now in this box, if there is an insulator, do you think the bulb will glow? The answer is no. And if in this box, if there is a conductor, will the bulb glow? Yes. That is the experiment. So you just need to label everything. Now this is your cell. This is your bulb. This is your box. You can even Call it your component holder. Component holder, we get there. That's the technical name for the box. That means it can hold the electrical insulator and it can hold the electrical conductor inside. When you will place an insulator inside, the bulb does not glow. When, when a conductor is inside, the bulb will glow and that will be the difference. And one example of each for insulator, you could have any insulator like wood, plastic, and for conductor, like you could have iron or steel or copper, all of them will allow electricity to pass through. Insulator, wood, plastic, etc. Now define resistance. Resistance is the ratio of voltage and current. And if you want to write it like that, you just have to explain the symbols to us. V stands for potential difference and I stands for current. How the resistance of P varies with the potential difference across it. So as you know that this graph is showing a decreasing gradient and you can clearly see that the current is becoming constant. The current is increasing, but at a decreasing rate. So you can say that because current is increasing, at a decreasing rate, it shows that the resistance is increasing as the voltage increases. And now what is the name of component P? Component P is a filament lamp. Now in a filament lamp, as you know that you have a coil and when a high amount of current flows through the coil, its temperature increases. 
since temperature is proportional to resistance, the resistance increases. All right, so the current nanometer two is 0 0.4 amperes and the current nanometer three is 0 0.6 amperes. So the question is, what is the current that is coming from ammeter one? From ammeter one, it's the total current that's coming because it's coming from the battery. So it's going to be 0 0.4 plus 0 0.6, which is one ampere. And remember this, that current leaving a cell must be equal to the current entering the cell. So the current in ammeter four will also be one ampere. Now for the next part, you use V is equals to IR. You have the current, which is 0 0.4. The resistance is 20 ohms. We're talking about this part. The current is 0 0.4 amperes and the resistance is 20. So the answer that you get is eight volts. Now you should know that if the voltage over here is eight volts, then the voltage across P should also be eight volts because they're in parallel. So if I give you the voltage across this, I give you the current passing through P, which is 0 0.6 amperes. Can you find out what is the resistance of P? Yes, of course, you can use R is equals to V over I. You know that the voltage is eight. You know that the current is 0 0.6. So the resistance that you get is going to be 30 ohms. And you know that the power supply is also connected in parallel. So if I connect a voltmeter over here, what will that voltmeter reading be? It'll also be eight volts because in parallel voltage remains the same. So what happens to the ray of light as it passes through the glass and emerges out? When it enters, you can see the angle is smaller, so it bends towards the normal. And when it exits, you can see that the angle increases actually. If this is the normal, the angle is bigger. So it bends away from the normal. Now, when it enters glass, glass is more dense. As a result, what happens is your wavelength decreases. Frequency remains unchanged. Frequency does not change in reflection, refraction, or any phenomenon because frequency depends on the source. So frequency remains unchanged. As a result, V is proportional to lambda Y because if frequency is constant and V is equals to F lambda, then you'll get V is proportional to lambda. Now, because you're entering glass, which is more dense and because it's more dense what's going to happen to the wavelength the wavelength will decrease and therefore the speed will also decrease refractive index is given by sine i over sine r it's sine of the larger angle over the smaller angle always so sine of 40 over sine 25 gives you 1.52 okay so for this part you have to set a scale first let's set the scale to be five centimeters in actual represent one centimeter on my drawing all right, so five centimeters in actual, which means in the question, represent one centimeter on my drawing. So if there's 20 centimeters in actual, then in my drawing, it should be four centimeters. The reason why I have to set the scale is 20 centimeters too huge, it won't come on a paper. So you'll have to set a scale. That means that my focal length will be represented by four centimeters. So I'll draw a straight line and I will measure a length of four centimeters on either side and I will mark the position of F. That's the first step. The second step will be, I will measure four centimeters again and mark two F. And I'll mark four centimeters again and mark two F. The next thing is the object is at 50 centimeters. So the object's distance from the center of the lens should be 10 centimeters. So from my lens from here, I will measure this length and I will say that this length should be 10 centimeters or you could say it will be 2 centimeters ahead of 2F. Now they don't mention anything about the height of the object so you're free to make the object as big as possible. Just try to keep it within the size of the lens. Done? Last steps. You have to draw a straight line from the object to the optical center passing straight undeviated. You will take one line parallel to the principal axis. This is the principal axis. And then you will make it pass through the focus and take it straight. The point where they intersect, this is where the image is. So your object should be on this side and image should be on the opposite side. And your object, actually, when you draw it with the scale, 
your height of object will be more than the height of the image and you will do it with the scale drawing. And that will be part two. What is meant by focal length? Focal length is the distance of the optical center from the principal focus. So after you're done with your scale drawing, what other properties do you know? You could easily say that the image is diminished because it's going to be smaller in size and it's inverted because you can see this is pointing up and this is pointing down. And just for your knowledge that this is the case of the human eye and also the case of the camera lens. Now let's discuss the loudspeaker. As the cone vibrates back and forth because of two magnetic fields that are applied to the loudspeaker, there's a force on this cone and this cone vibrates back and forth and because of that the air molecules that are in front also vibrate back and forth which causes compressions and rarefactions something like this compressions rarefactions compressions rarefactions to be generated in the air and that's what generates sound and it travels away from the speaker so as the cone vibrates back and forth air molecules also vibrate back and forth in the same direction causing compressions and rarefactions to be formed and hence sound is produced now highest frequency that you could hear possibly is 20 kilohertz in the next part they're saying calculate the longest wavelength longest wavelength means that you should use the smallest possible frequency so v is equals to f lambda speed is given as 340 the frequency that you're supposed to use should be the smallest which is 20 into lambda so lambda will turn out to be 17 meters let me just show you how you will do this question. First of all, you will take a ray straight from the object, just the way you did in the previous question. It's so similar to that. All the way to the center of the lens. The only question you'll have is where is the focus? So they've given you the focal length as three and it's a full scale drawing. So what you'll do is you'll put your ruler on one side. Let's say you put the ruler this way with the zero mark over here. And you will measure the length of three centimeters. Let's say, for example, three centimeters turns out to be at this point. Just saying as an example. So let's say three centimeters turns out to be after two boxes, but you'll have to measure it with the ruler yourself. So if three centimeters over there, then three centimeters will also be two boxes away from the lens on the other side. And this will be F. And then this will be 2F. And likewise, on the left side, the first mark you labeled was F. And the second mark, which will be after two boxes, will be 2F. So then what you'll do is, once you have measured this distance with the ruler, like I said, you have to put a ruler and you have to ensure that wherever you're writing F, that distance using the ruler should be three centimeters. So in my case, I'm assuming the two boxes make it to be three centimeters. Then what you'll do with your straight line that you've drawn, you will make sure that it passes through F and then go straight. Let me do it. So wherever your F is, just take your ray through it and cross it and give it the arrowhead. And then you will draw another ray from the object passing through the optical center. Let me do it. Here we go. Kind of like this. So this ray going from the object through the optical center and then meeting at this point. As a result of that, you will have an image which is going to point downwards over here all the way to this point. And this will be your image and that'll be your object. But remember, you have to measure three centimeters from the ruler, mark F, then measure another three centimeters, mark two F, and then simply continue your rays. This ray is not a problem at all because this does not require any scale, just pass it straight. This ray which is going parallel needs to pass through that three centimeter point and wherever the rays intersect, that's where your image is formed. Now, what is linear magnification? Linear magnification is height of image over height of object. And then to get the magnification, you will measure the height of the image using a ruler because it's a scale drawing. So you will literally put your ruler like this, align the zero mark over here and measure this height. This will be the height of the image. Similarly, you will also get the height of the object and you will use that and you will get your answer. One thing I want to mention that if you're doing this at home and you're doing it with the ruler and everything is on spot as per my instructions and your answers are not matching with the marking scheme, not to worry. 
because the scaling of the printers can be different. The Cambridge printer could have a different scale as compared to the printer you use at home. So no need to worry, no need to panic in these questions. Mostly your answers are different from the marking scheme. But as long as you're following the instructions, you should get full marks. Now, part C says you have this problem of long sightedness. You have to complete figure 5.3 to show the rays traveling through the eye. Now, when you have long sightedness, the problem is that the rays converge behind the back of the eye. And you have to make the arrows. And if they ask you for the correction of this, you will say that you will use a converging lens. Why? Because when you will put a converging lens, what's going to happen? These rays are going to converge further. And then after passing through the human lens, they're going to converge further. And there are chances that they would meet at the back. So think about it. The reason why the image is not being formed at the back of the eye is that the human lens is unable to converge them to this point. So you need to increase your convergence. So you will use a converging lens.